everybody, it's me again, Adam Chapnick from the Security Token Academy. And we are here at the 2018 Start Engine Summit. I believe this is the third and most spectacular of all the Start Engine Summits. And we're happy to be joined by none other than the co-founder himself and CEO of Start Engine, our host, the one and only Howard Marks. Thank you for being with us again. Thank you, Adam. I'm happy to talk to you today. This has been an amazing start. We started early this morning. We had. Uh, chairman Cox, former SEC chairman, also former congressman, uh, make some remarks in private. This was not live streamed for our audience. However, we, we believe his words were important because he set the stage for what is going to be a great day. That's fantastic. So um, tell us about the event a little bit. This is, as I mentioned, I think the third, the third annual. Um, and it's become one of the central events of this security token space. Why uh, did you guys decide to start hosting an event like this and how has it evolved? So our view was this. This is a great opportunity, a great marketplace for everyone, except that we found that there was not enough information, knowledge, ideas sharing, especially in regulation thinking how to work with regulators, what each regulation meant, how to apply it. We felt there was that lacking. Most of the other summits that we've been to and conferences were more, I would say, blockchain applications. And we believe, frankly believe that access to capital, tra trading these tokens is center of what we believe is the blockchain revolution. Yeah, you guys have come at it from the equity crowdfunding side, unlike a lot of people in the space. So you have a unique sort of evolution that has to do with really having deference to regulation and, and wanting to have that, that clarity and that regulation and teaching people how to work within it. I think that's a unique sort of approach that you were sort of born with as a way, as, a, as an organization. It really reflects on the event and how people are, uh, are participating with that in mind. I think it's great. So um, Start Engine has had some pretty interesting stuff that's been popping up over the last several weeks. Um, can you want to talk about some of the developments that you guys have been announcing uh, with the within the company? What's going on? Sure. We've been quite busy. Yeah. We haven't been as busy as the SEC has <laughs> with all the enforcement and all the actions they've been doing. Our busy has been building. So we announced recently the creation of what we call ERC 1450. Yeah. And that is a smart contract on the Ethereum, and its purpose is to tokenize securities and alternative assets. It has not really a purpose outside of that, so it's about a representation, a digital tool representation of what a security is. So a company that wants to raise money could use ERC-1450 to give to their shareholders a digital certificate. Now, what ERC-1450 does, it protects the investor and the people who are trading the token from violating any of the security rules. And the way we do it is not through code and programming, which is probably not possible at this moment to do. We do it because we force the transfer agent that is registered with the SEC, the transfer agent who has the records of that token holder to allow a token to transfer Meaning, even if you have it in your wallet, there's nothing you can do with it until you decide to trade it on a regulated exchange. Interesting, well that's a very applicable use of the smart contract technology as it, results, as it relates to compliance. I think that's a perfect offshoot of what we were saying before about your company's focus on figuring out the most sort of real world application for all of this technology. It fits with your track record, I think, which is fun to watch. So um, you guys have a specific, very specific insight into the mix of issuers and how it sort of evolved from this uh, equity crowdfunding world into this token issuance world. What are you guys seeing on the platform in terms of um, the adoption of token issuance among you know, people who are thinking they want to raise money? Is that rare? Is it common? Is it half and half? How, what are you seeing? So right now we see about 15% of our customers. 15. Who, 15, one okay. five, mm -hmm. who are issuing tokens uh, with their offerings. These are entrepreneurs that have companies that are related to the blockchain mm -hmm. as applications or related applications. 
But with ERC 1450, we're going to be announcing soon that every company that we launch, every share we issue, will be tokenized. Oh, we're regardless wow. That's whether, a big deal. Re regardless whether your company is a blockchain company or you are a, 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 a restaurant looking for capital, an apparel business, a wine making business. Electric car company maybe. An <laughs> electric car company, absolutely. We believe that tokenizing securities from the launch at the beginning will be very appealing to investors. The next big challenge to resolve for our marketplace and us is how do you trade them? Right. They, these security tokens will not be traded on any of those existing exchanges that are on the marketplace today. Because they would be violating security laws. Right. They, they may be already doing that, but mm -hmm. at least that will be clear, very clear. So they're not going to be taking those tokens. So who will? Well, it turns out uh, many companies, including ourselves, are awaiting registration with the SEC or, or, or are already registered and they're awaiting the, the, the final yes so that we can start trading securities that are tokenized. So and that'll be a secondary, as a, as a secondary market. Is that an ATS that you're going to become? Is that the terminology? That's correct. So we're, we're hoping to become an ATS. It is the secondary market, but keep in mind the reason the secondary market is important it's not because of the trading. It's because when you issue those tokens initially and you receive money for your company, mm -hmm. it enhances the offer. Absolutely. The offer becomes much more appealing because you know that within a year or not, maybe using regulation A plus as an offering, you can trade the next day. That liquidity is an extraordinary enhancer Absolutely. for investors. Yeah, we've heard in some of our interviews from experts saying that it instantly creates a 15% premium just across asset classes and sometimes even more for, for prospective investors who are considering getting in. Um, so that's borne out by the experts for sure. Um, so since you're seeing you said 15%, do you think there's anything that's missing? Is it a regulatory, um, maybe clarity? Is it uh, just general awareness? Is it sort of trepidation on the part of people getting involved with something new? What do you think is missing that'll help that 15% become 85% of people who are willing to do just a straight up security token offering to raise money? I, I think we're evolving. The Start Engine, we, we view it this way. Our competitors, probably not yet. Mm -hmm. They're probably looking for what standards will be out there. We've proposed ours with ERC 1450. Others may see other kinds of opportunities to tokenize it differently. We're not sure how it's going to shake up. Yeah. But we are going to move forward ourselves with the tokenization of everything and, and then trading of it. And we're going to be doing it within our ecosystem, but we want to share it with everybody. And that's why when we released ERC 1450, we made it open source and available for everyone to use. And, and it's not, there's no financial transaction there. That's fantastic. So um, what about the question of interoperability? Is that something, what will, what will be possible with the ERC 1450? Is that something that need, people need to trade on your chain? Or is it going to be able to uh, cooperate with other chains, how does that work? Well, initially, it will be on our systems mm -hmm. because we're the first to implement it. Right. <laughs> However, given that it's out there, available to everyone, we hope that other of our partners, and that includes some of the great companies like T0, Open Finance, uh, Circle, uh, we hope they will adopt it. Mm -hmm. Should they decide to pick something else, that's fine. We, we may also look at it as well. We're here, to, we're here to change how companies raise capital for the better. And to the extent that our ideas are adopted, we are thankful. To the extent that another idea becomes more popular, we will adopt it as well. That's amazing. You mentioned Circle um, and some of the other platforms, uh, the exchanges. Um, there have been a lot of announcements, you know, Circle was acquired by Goldman Sachs. Um, there's been a, a lot of heavyweight financial players coming into this industry in all different ways, whether it was in the crypto space or in the security token space. Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing or a neither thing? Well, the more there are players that are available to 
uh, help companies raise capital, the better it is for everyone, for economy, for job creation. Mm -hmm. So I, I find this a, a strong positive. I don't look at competition as they have to lose for us to win. Mm. I look at competition more of a competition where we work together. That's why at, at our summit here today, we've invited all our competitors to come. Mm. Most have chosen to come and speak. And we have done that with no strings attached, absolutely uh, wanting to collaborate and, and have an open uh, dialogue. That's very admirable, I love that. Well, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for being the host today. We'll let you get back to your duties to satisfy the crowd. I'm sure everybody wants to talk to you. We'll have you back soon and often. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, Adam. Thank you at the Token Security Token Academy. Really appreciative of everything you guys are doing. We love you, all right. Mm -hmm.